हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर महेश मोहिते पीडियाट्रिशियन पीडियाट्रिक एंड न्यूनेटल इंटेंसिविज फ्रॉम पनवेल महाराष्ट्र टुडे इन द स्टीयर टॉक आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट रिकरंट कफ अ कॉमन प्रॉब्लम कफ इज अ वेरी कॉमन सिम्टम इन द ऑफिस प्रैक्टिस ऑफ अ पीडियाट्रिशियन एंड इट स्टेट वे डी नोट्स डोमिनेंटली एयरवे डिसीज वेन अ पेशेंट कम्स विथ रिकरंट कफ एज अ सिम्टम वन नीड टू डिसाइड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वेदर इट इज कफ mother the patient have different denotations and kind of understanding about cough and quite often we see a child who comes with gargar being called as cough which actually is a respiratory secretion or could be a low grade wheeze underneath and not in true sense of cough so once we ensure that it is cough the next is is it a significant cough so we ask when do we cough so he coughs only in the daytime but never in the night time he is quite comfortable while playing and he don't cough so this could be a functional cough or a habit cough and it has a psychological reason for it once we rule out these two possibilities then we want to know immediate priority is there any red flag symptoms or signs in this so if the child is having fatigue if the child is having clubbing is having cyanosis growth failure chest deformities then that needs a immediate evaluation for the underlying cause especially in the background of recurrent or a chronic cough next comes whether it is really a recurrent cough or a chronic cough what do i mean by recurrent cough a true recurrent cough is a period of cough for a few days or maybe week subsequently then there is a another attack maybe few weeks or few months later and in between the child is absolutely all right not only by the symptom but by the underlying disease also so the child is absolutely all right in between symptomatically as well as physically underlying classical exam being recurrent respiratory infections viral infections in a infant or a toddler age group and a child can have as high as 10 to 12 or maybe more infections in a year first or two years as long as there is no underlying growth failure as long as child is otherwise doing perfectly okay this is to be just monitored and does not require evaluation then comes something called as pseudo cough wherein or pseudo recurrent cough wherein there is a recurrent symptomatology on the background of a chronic underlying pathology a classical being inflamed airways of asthma there is a chronic inflammation there are intermittent symptomatic exacerbations with cough as well as wheezing so here you will require further evaluation examination detailed examination evaluation to come to the diagnosis other examination could be a congenital malformation like cpam or it could be a cystic or or it could be a bronchogenic cyst wherein during these or kind of pathology getting infected they come up with the symptomatology once you infect infection is controlled they again become silent in between for few months to come up with another infection and again so they definitely require some further evaluation with in clinical examination as well as with the investigations so usually there is no growth failure in case of a recurrent uh, non significant respiratory infection first one or two years usually there is no growth failure in this kind of a pseudo a recurrent cough which i told you asthma or cpam or this when there is underlying infection is totally under control or inflammation is reasonably well under control in between the attacks but what we are worried about is a chronic cough the chronic cough is one wherein the cough goes beyond 4 weeks by all the definition defined except british thoracic society which says it's more than 8 weeks but there again if there is a child with a relentless progressive increasing cough for more than 3 week that also may be labeled as chronic cough now why this cut offs of 3 or 4 weeks simply because all acute sinister pathology all acute pathology would come under control with the symptoms within 2 to 3 weeks and something going beyond 4 weeks usually it's a chronic pathology and the cut off of 4 week because usually if it goes the pathology goes beyond 4 weeks then there is a possibility of a irreversible progressive damage to the underlying lung which need to be evaluated by early intervention so we need to pick up so any cup going beyond 4 weeks one should be careful and should be very aggressive in evaluating for the diagnosis now something which can be clinically detected in such or kind of noticed in this usually there is a growth failure usually there are signs of early respiratory decompensation like fatigue respiratory distress subtle tachypneas growth failure hypoxia clubbing may be coming up so these all will happen in case of chronic cough but these will never happen or almost never happen in case of a recurrent cough once we categorize them into recurrent cough by this next i want to know where is the anatomy where is the problem for that we need to look at the associated symptoms and associated these coming with high grade fever on a day one with a cough 
very likely it's a viral infection. It comes with a strider, very likely it's a glottic pathology. Classically, you may get kind of anaphylactic uh, reaction or kind of a allergic reaction with a glottic edema coming with recurrent cough. If it is a brassy cough, very likely it's a tracheal uh, pathology. It could be a tracheomalacia, tracheitis. Classically, you may get recurrent tracheomalacia related wheeze and cough. We commonly see in classical tracheomalacia, which is seen a post teofacial or esophageal atresia surgery, and they go on till 5 to 10 years sometimes on and on. It could be wet productive recurrent cough, which could be because of bronchitis or bronchiectasis. It could be hypoxia associated. If you get cough, then think of hypoxia and maybe low grade tachypnea, which will be seen in underlying parenchymal pathology or interstitial pathology. So, look at those associated features and you can find out where is the anatomy. Then comes not only important, it's another important thing, a sequence of these symptoms with cough. So, cough with fever, if you see, if the cough started early and a fever come low grade, cough is going on for 3 4 days and fever started later on, could be a low grade asthma, it could be asthma or it could be super added infection on a, on a foreign body kind of a pathology. If there was a fever and cough started on day 1 itself with a prodrome, viral prodrome, it's a viral infection. So, only fever and the cough started on day 1 with high grade, it could be mycoplasma infection in a subsequent 4 to 5 year old child. If it is a high grade fever with coming after 3 to 4 days, it could be parenchymal pathology subsequently may become breathless. So, sequence of those presentations and symptoms also are important. There are certain age of onset kind of a related recurrent cough. So, child than infant or neonate getting in the early age group, infant say maybe after 1 to 2 years getting recurrent, very likely it is underlying congenital malformation or kind of a congenital pathology. It could be uh, recurrent aspiration syndrome like gastroesophageal reflux syndromes, it could be TO cleft, it could be tracheosophageal fistula, uh, um, uh, kind of a delayed development child may have a recurrent aspiration due to palatopharyngeal incompetences, it could be a submucosal cleft. Uh, which may be causing recurrent aspirations. So, those need to be aggressively looked for. It could be a uh, early manifestation of CF or a PCD, which can become as a recurrent cough in an early age group in this first 2 to 3 years of age. Coming subsequently, it could be multi trigger wheeze or a wheeze associated lower respiratory tract infection. And once it goes beyond 3 to 5 years, common cause being asthma. As I already said, the commonest cause of a recurrent cough is recurrent viral infections in first two to three years of age and as long as growth is good and there are no critical symptoms of systemic failure one need to be careful about uh, uh, one, one, one can be one need not go into detail evaluation just monitor this child's growth and general parameters the commonest missed factors in evaluation is environmental pollutants so smoke in the house exposure to dust mite cockroaches fungus or there are some agarbatti dhub being uh, used in the or kind of one mosquito repellent used in the house, they also can be giving rise to cough. Not to forget the passive smoking uh, which may happen in a child. Psychological factors also need to be so. Once you rule out the sinister pathology, the significant cough pathology, always look at the psychological factors in the house, which can be in the house, in the school atmosphere, or any other things. And this child beyond the pediatrician evaluation may require a counselors psychological counselor examination a thorough clinical examination is very important after the history because most of the time 60 70 percent time you have made your diagnosis history examination definitely will help you and where it will help you you need to plot his growth chart to find out if there is anything sinister underlying going on which is causing growth failure look for associated features like fever rhinorrhea subtle tachypnea saturation which less than 95 percent now the, here i want to take a minute Subtle tachypnea and saturation, borderline saturation 90 to 93 is commonly missed by the practitioner and they actually denote a serious underlying pathology either interstitial or parenchymal pathology. So, all patients with chronic cough make it a point to take right upper limb and right lower limb saturation which is preductal and postnatal, especially in the infantile age group to pick up any significant underlying respiratory or cardiac pathology. Relative tachycardia, cardiac signs, exertional dyspnea are quite commonly uh, missed on a clinic examination which should be focused. Detailed respiratory examination, we all know about inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation when it comes to respiratory evaluation and certain areas which are beyond respiratory system also should be looked for classical being ears, uh, ear examination for any kind of uh, wax or any otitis externa, a sinusitis need to be ruled out, submucous cleft, cardiovascular evaluation should be done. When do we evaluate or investigate? Usually 
minimal investigations are required but there are some unusual or suspicious history like a history of choking suggest a foreign body definitely required to evaluate growth chart is a very important evaluation investigation as already mentioned time and again associated hypoxia if there is a signs of chronic dysfunction like clubbing chest deformity growth failure fatigue if there is abnormal respiratory finding which needs confirmation is abnormal cardiac finding which needs to confirmation suspected malformation anomaly these are all the condition where you will perhaps require to be investigated required to be evaluated further by various investigations what investigations you want to do probably for a pediatrician a chest x ray is a common and useful inform uh, investigation but will provide you information on the background of whatever history or clinical examination you have done beyond that something which may be a sometimes surprising to us localized hyperinflated or maybe a collapsed pigment patches or is any mediastinal pathology any kind of a lymph node or a mass which is arising from mediastinum which may be compressing on the bronchus which may be giving some extra information a rare cause of case of cox or something also can be picked up on x ray but generally in our experience the x ray in case of chronic cough has or recurrent cough has not given much addition to what we got from history and clinical examination uh, one common thing i see is multiple cbc being done coming prior to you and believe me cbc or hemogram has rarely helped me in diagnosing a case of recurrent cough one single evaluation is justified a recurrent evaluation perhaps are not required once we go through all these things and still there is no breakthrough then perhaps this child requires sub specialty evaluation and investigation in which you may need to do a spirometry to find out a subtle kind of airway obstruction or restrictive disorder you may require bronchoscopy to find out if there is any airway malformation or a missed foreign body a ball can give you about a can something like endobronchial tuberculosis or uh, it could be a cox pathology where a bronchial lavage can be growing some organism out of it and may give you some hint towards a pathology a ct thorax i found is is reasonably required or kind of helpful when there is a mediastinal pathology which may be missed even on x ray a ct thorax can pick up those kind of things and if you are having some clue towards a cardiac pathology then definitely 2d echo is required so this is how it goes if i have to summarize the whole thing your diagnosis is made almost 70 to 80 percent time by good history and a clinical examination maybe another 10 to 15 percent by all these advanced evaluations and rarely and maybe about 10 15 percent times you may require a sub specialty evaluation super specialty evaluation thank you very much the next talk is going to be by dr rajesh chokhani on interacting with three patients to analyze their history thank you very much